In the past 10 years, I've been both a captain in the Marine Corps and a manager in corporate America. And in both cases, I believe the best way to lead and be successful in complex environments is by empowering other people. And as we move toward a more automated and machine-driven future, this kind of leadership is going to become more important. And I believe the best model for doing this is found in a surprising connection between the way Marines do things and the way machines learn things. So back in 2012, I had the privilege of being a platoon commander with 1st Battalion, 8th Marines in Helmand Province, Afghanistan. I was 27 years old, and I had 36 fantastic Marines working for me. And our job was to keep the infantry supplied with everything they needed to fight the Taliban. It was pretty straightforward. Four to five days a week, we would run convoys, which are these long lines of armored cargo vehicles and gun trucks. We carry ammunition, food, fuel, water, you name it. And we deliver to outposts spread along a 40-kilometer stretch of rugged and unpaved road that sat just east of the Helmand River. And for the first few months of that deployment, I commanded every convoy. And I did this for two reasons. I wanted to give the Marines confidence that I knew what I was doing, but also because, in my mind, that's what a leader should do. Be hyper-involved, present, commanding, controlling. But about five months in, the situation changed, and the Marine Corps was going to start pulling troops and equipment out of Afghanistan. And so for my Marines and I, that meant we suddenly had two missions. We still had to support the infantry, but we also had to move a ton of excess equipment back across Helmand Province so that it could be sent home to the States. And these two missions were separated by about 160 kilometers of Afghan desert. Now, obviously, I can't be in two places at once or control two convoys at the same time, so I had to rethink my role. I had to divide the platoon, and I had to let go of some of that control that I thought I had. In essence, I suddenly became more coach than commander. And I had to reach back to a core principle from my officer training called commander's intent. It's when the leader clearly defines what success looks like, but gives others the flexibility to be creative in how they get there. But that's what needed to happen. And I was humbled by what happened next. Because when I got out of the way, I unlocked human potential that I didn't know existed. The Marines exceeded every timeline and goal that was given to them. They moved all the equipment ahead of schedule. They found innovative solutions to complex obstacles they encountered along the way, and they did it safely. My initial leadership instincts about control were wrong. And what I learned was that I didn't need better equipment or more control. I needed well-trained Marines capable of acting as leaders themselves. And my experience was just part of a broader trend toward more decentralized leadership in the Marine Corps, driven by the speed and complexity of the modern battlefield. And I know that business isn't a battlefield, but having been in it a few years, I know we can agree that business is challenged by its own version of speed and complexity. And so in that sense, I think everyone from frontline managers to chief executives could benefit from some of these same leadership themes and try to produce what General Mattis would call motivated, innovative, and agile warriors, qualities that are so relevant in business today. But we don't have to look to the military for answers on how to do this, because many of the same principles we use to empower men and women on the battlefield are being used to empower machines in business, in places like Silicon Valley. So ironically, it's machine learning that can give us three lessons for how to more effectively empower our people. And I'll show you what I mean. So one of the great insights with machine learning is that you can actually get a lot more out of an algorithm by not explicitly telling it how to do something. Instead, you give it a goal, a way to learn, and let it make decisions without a lot of intervention. This sounds incredibly human to me. And as leaders, I think we need to foster this same kind of freedom for our people. Because when we micromanage a process, we limit what's possible. And we limit the spark of talented people to give us new ideas. So instead, we should clarify the commander's intent and focus people on purpose instead of process. 
Purpose for me is the big difference between leadership and management, because when people understand the big picture, it increases the intrinsic motivation of the work, and it helps people be more creative. But as you probably guessed from the Afghanistan example, this kind of hands-off empowerment only works if people have the right skills to effectively execute that purpose. But these skills can't be static, and with machine learning. The algorithm is only relevant if you feed it data, and keep feeding it often, so that it can learn and adjust. And so, if we want to build teams of great human algorithms that we can trust, we need to give employees opportunities for early and lifelong learning, because learning is how we adapt. And in a high-change environment where people are the ultimate competitive advantage, the organization whose people can learn and adapt the fastest will win. The military solves for this by creating learning journeys, professional education that starts early and spans an entire career, and this way they don't have to settle for this fine wine approach to people development, <laughs> where talent ages on a shelf for years waiting for the the right opportunity. They challenge them early so they can fail quickly and adjust through feedback. But right now, this kind of education isn't happening in most places. In a recent study from MIT and Deloitte, 90% of workers reported needing to update their skills at least every year, but only a third were satisfied with the kind of support they were getting from their company. We can do better, but speed is important too. And at some point, we've got to take all this learning and all this creativity, and actually do something with it. And so, our third lesson for machine learning is that we need to have a bias for action. And this means getting comfortable making the decision that's probably right, instead of waiting for that elusive perfect answer. Because one of the great ironies of the information age is that even though we have all this data, there's still a lot of uncertainty. There's just too many variables, and so we can analyze things to death, and never have a clear picture of what to do next. Programmers know this, and they're using probabilistic techniques to build algorithms that can learn from really small amounts of data. And the inspiration for this? Is human adult learning? You and I are already programmed to think like this, but too often we get stuck in this mindset of having to have perfect information before we can execute. And by the way, it's not lost on me that I'm telling you not to focus on process and then giving you a three-step process for how to do it. <laughs> but this model isn't just about solving for a fast pace or complex business environment. It's about filling a skills gap. In a global survey from PwC, over 1,300 CEOs were asked, "What employee skills are most important and hardest to find?" The answer: leadership, problem solving, adaptability, creativity, and innovation. Soft skills. It's because CEOs realize that these skills bring uniquely human qualities that can't be replaced by technology. And so that's what I like most about these lessons of purpose, lifelong learning, and empowered decision making, is that they give people the ability to do the things machines can't. Because we will never win a race against a computer to solve simple tasks or answer complex computational questions, but we can help people be better leaders, be more creative, be more innovative, and figure out which questions we should be asking in the first place. Because I don't know of an algorithm that can replicate the spark of human imagination, at least not yet. But whether or not you see this as a viable blueprint for leadership, I do believe that artificial intelligence is going to force us to have a fundamentally different relationship with uncertainty and control. And I've seen firsthand how letting go of some of that control can bring out the best qualities in people. And so I'd invite all of you to join me in thinking differently about leadership, and start empowering our people the way we empower machines. Thank you. <laughs>